So let's do two examples of long division with polynomials. So the first case is the easiest. It happens when you are dividing by a monomial. And remember, monomial for us means one term. So 10x squared, he's thinking, but there's two things there, Angela. Okay, I know, but they're multiplying, so that makes it a monomial. When that's the case, you can just divide up that numerator so that each of those factors in the numerator lives over that denominator. This does not seem obvious at first, but hold on. Once you see it, notice if I gave you this one to start with and I asked you to simplify, you'd say, oh, look, they all have the same denominator. Let's go ahead and write that as 1. Okay, well, we don't want that. We want it split apart because now I can reduce each of those three fractions. So 10x to the fourth over 10x squared. I'll use a different color so you can see. So the tens will go away. x squared into x to the fourth leaves behind x squared. Here the 10 and the 15, right, we'll take out that 5 that's common. x squared and x cubed leave behind an x. So now we'll have minus 5x. And then, oh, hold on, you're right, I forgot that too. Minus 5 halves, that, five halves x. Last fraction there, the 20 and the 10 leave behind 2. x squares completely cancel, leaves behind a 1. Gives me my final answer for that. Okay, before I start the second example, though, I need you to get in the Wayback Machine and set it for some place around second grade or third grade when you learned how to long divide with numbers because we're going to use that same technique when we divide by a binomial. So 11 times what to get me close to 56? So you say 5 and we write that up there and then we multiply and then we subtract and then we bring down, then we repeat. 11 times what to get me close to 18? So you'll tell me 1 and I'll do that multiplying and then I'll subtract and so I'll get a remainder of 7. And you're probably not going to be able to get away with R7 these days, but right, you might have been told then that is 7 over 18. So it's the remainder, oh, I'm sorry, ah, 11. 7 over whatever number was out in front there. All right, so we're going to use that same idea with a little tweaking when we have polynomials. So when I start, I'm just going to look at the term that has the highest power out in front. So that's x to the first. And the term underneath that has the highest power. That's how we start. And this time I don't want to get as close as I can without going over. Excuse me. I want to get exactly that. So x times what? gives me exactly 5x cubed. So you'll answer 5x squared. 5x squared times x gives me exactly 5x cubed. Now that I've decided that, I need to take the 5x squared and multiply it by both pieces out here in front. So 5x squared times x, that gives me the 5x cubed I needed. 5x squared times negative 3 gives me minus 15x squared. So far, so good. So we've chosen our number. We've done the multiplying. So the next thing is subtracting. But when we have right polynomials, instead of subtracting, we can think of adding the opposite. So subtracting means adding the opposite. What you're going to hear me say is change signs and add. Remember the opposite in algebra means change all the signs. So I'm going to change all these signs. It's going to go fast change the signs, and then add those two lines together. So the 5x cubed go away. That was exactly what we needed to have happen. And here I have negative 9x squared plus 15x squared, so that is 6x squared. So we've just gotten to that part where we have the 18. We've done the subtracting, and we go again. x, biggest thing out in front, times what to get exactly 6x squared? Okay, so you'll tell me 6x, positive. So we'll go ahead and plus 6x. Once we have that, we multiply everybody over here. So 6x times x, 6x squared, right, that's what we wanted. 6x times negative 3, so negative 18x. Multiply, subtract, but change signs and add. 
Here they go. Change signs. Add them up. 6x squareds go away. That's what we needed. So now I have an 18x. So I don't really bring down those extra terms because it gets real cluttered, but I'm going to go ahead and look back up here into the top line. And I have a 2x positive, 18x positive adding. So 20x is there. One more time. x times what to get 20x? So plus 20. 20 times x is 20x. 20 times negative 3 is minus 60. Change signs and add. So 60 and a negative 1 would be a positive 59 for our remainder. So if your teacher will let you get away with R59, go for it. If you're in my class, you know that won't work. So we'll say and 59 over x minus 3. Okay, so I'll squiggle around it so you can find that answer in there somewhere hiding. Okay, so there's our quotient.